and our many weaknesses because he himself became human. Lord, hear us. Let us pray. We'll call to mind our sins and ask for God's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, in the abundance of your kindness, you surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you. Pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what our consciences dread and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please take a seat for the readings. In the first reading, God is just, he rewards the faithful, and he sees that the sinners do not go unpunished. Let's listen. The first reading, a reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. You object. What the Lord does is unjust. Listen, you house of Israel. Is what I do unjust? Is it not what you do that is unjust? When the upright man renounces in his integrity to commit sin and dies because of this, he dies because of the evil that he himself has committed. When the sinner renounces sin to become law-abiding and honest, he deserves to die, live. He has chosen to renounce all his previous sins. He shall certainly live. He shall not die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. If our life in Christ means anything to you, if love can persuade at all, or the spirit that we have in common, or any tenderness and sympathy, then be united in your convictions and united in your love with a common purpose and a common mind. That is the one thing which would make me completely happy. There must be no competition among you, no conceit, but everybody is to be self-effacing. 
always consider the other person to be better than yourself, so that nobody thinks of his own interests first, but everybody thinks of other people's interests instead. In your minds, you must be the same as Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, what is your opinion? A man had two sons. He went and said to the first, my boy, you go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not go. But afterwards thought better of it and he went. The man then went and said the same thing to the second son, who answered, Certainly, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the father's will? The first they said. And Jesus said to them, I tell you solemnly, tax collectors and prostitutes are making their way into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you a pattern of true righteousness, but you did not believe him. And yet the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after seeing that, you refused to think better of it, and you refused to believe in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. Please take a seat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We ask God to bless these few words. <clears throat> Today we welcome JJ. He's a young man who will be confirmed very shortly. He's undergone a period of prayer and of study. And God confirms us, confirm to strengthen us in our faith, so that we can strengthen the hope and the faith and the love in the hearts of other people. So today I have a little story for JJ. Anybody can listen. I was in a train in Bangladesh, it was 2013, and I was going from Dhaka in the south to the north to a little village called Srimango. And there I would be met by an Englishman whose name was Dr. Paul Thompson. He was doing a little project and I would join him. But as the train hurtled north, the carriage was filled with people a few young men with henna on their beards and on their hair were singing verses from the Quran and they asked me if I was a Muslim and I said, no, my name is Father Peter, I'm a Catholic priest from Scotland. And when the tea man came round, they offered to buy me a cup of tea, which I took. It was all very polite. And I was in a window seat looking out into the pitch dark and there was a little tap in the window, a tap in the window, and I peered into the dark. There was a face of a small boy. He was in the roof, and he wanted to come in. He was hanging upside down like a little bat. So the two of us, myself, and the wee man who brought me the cup of tea, we opened the window, maybe eight or nine inches, and we pulled the little fellow through an arm and a leg at a time, and he sped away. He would have been about four feet tall. So I thought, I wonder where he is now. So I went down the carriages, and there he was sitting on the join between two carriages. 
where they join and they move together like tectonic plates, sitting right in the middle, scything back and forth just under his legs. And had lots of questions today, for example, he'd be 26 years of age. His life, has life been good to him? Questions at the time, who is he? Where's his family? He's risked death on the roof. Now he's risked death inside the carriage. I don't know his name, but I want to call him Legion because there are many of them. Hundreds, thousands, boys and girls running away for whatever reason. And I thought of Onesimus, the runaway slave, who was saved by St. Paul. St. Paul met him in prison. J.J. has chosen that name today as his confirmation name. He wants to be confirmed with the name Paul because Paul had a great persistence. He never gave up. He was shipwrecked. He was lashed, he was imprisoned, but Paul had a heart of gold and an inner strength that only God could give. And I also thought of the doctor that I met, we did a project together whose name was also Paul, Dr. Paul Thompson. So we asked JJ for the same spirit that St. Paul had. And so JJ, we're not asking that God will arrange a shipwreck for you. And we're not asking that God will arrange a few lashings for you tied to a pole. And we're not asking God to send you for a few spells in prison. But today, God will put fire into your heart to prepare you for the task ahead. You've already done well in your life. You've got two very good degrees. You've got a life to live. But God might just have a little task for you as he had for St. Paul, as he had for the slave Anesimus, as he had for Dr. Paul Thompson. It'll be lined up, it'll be tailor-made just for JJ. It might be something very simple. We don't know yet. But when you consent to that, your yes will have a very strong affirmative quality. Your yes will mean exactly that. Yes, God, here I am to do your will. And I pray prayers today. We ask God to bless all the people present who have been confirmed. May we never be deaf to God's promptings in our hearts. Lord, hear us. We pray for Bobby Thompson, a neighbor. I met his wife just before Mass. She's speeding away to the hospital. Bobby took a heart attack two days ago, very well known in the parish. And we prayed from yesterday, and his wife listened to the strained mass, delighted that we remembered Bobby. She says, yesterday, three stents, and he's had his operation, and he's doing well. So we thank God for that. It's God to bless Bobby and his wife, Julia. They live just up the road. For healing, for comfort, for God to guide the hand of the surgeon. Lord, hear us. And we ask our ladies intercession in these very troubling times. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And now we invite JJ to come forward to receive the Sacrament of Confirmation. Just stand here, JJ. His sponsor is offshore at the moment, so David, very kindly and with JJ's consent, has agreed to stand in as his sponsor. Come and join us, David. And so we have the renunciation of sin, and the answer to every question is very simple. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? All of us, I do. And do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, the father of sin and the prince of darkness? Do you reject all his empty and worthless promises? I do.
we are all going to put our hands forward. Normally, the priest and the sponsor, but we all call down and invoke the Holy Spirit to come in his power and in his majesty to come into the heart and the soul of J.J. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and your daughters from sin, and you gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and their guide. Give J.J. the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Give him the spirit of right judgment and courage. Give him the spirit of knowledge and reverence for the Lord. Fill J.J. with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. And normally, the sponsor would put his hand on J.J.'s shoulder, but in these perilous times, he'll just put his hand as if it's hovering over his, the shoulder of J.J. to let him know that he's supported, he's not alone, he's supported in all of these things. And now we have an anointing with oil, and just a little safety precaution with gel. It is lovely anointing with the oil of chrism, a very ancient oil, olive oil mixed with balsam. It has a sweet fragrance. It was used in the coronation of important people in times past, emperors, kings, princesses, such as the dignity that now comes down upon JJ. So JJ, if you just come forward now, I'll put it on your palms of your hands, and I'll put it on your forehead. JJ, be sealed, sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And JJ, peace be with you and with your spirit. Now, JJ, you asked, I asked if you'd like a little gift. You asked for a very simple gift. You asked for a set of rosary beads. So I have them here. I will make a little blessing over the beads. I will ask God that, JJ, in your prayers, you'll be drawn closer to God the Father, that you'll feel an affinity with his son, Jesus, that you'll be filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and you may have a special love and affection for Mary, the mother of Jesus. This is our little gift, simple to you. you. And I return to JJ, his record of receiving the sacraments is all here in black and white in the Paris stamp as well. He's been baptized, he's made his first confession, he's received First Holy Communion, and now the Sacrament of Confirmation. Together with a little letter from the bishop authorizing me today to perform as his delegate this lovely ceremony. So receive these, put them into a little envelope just for you, JJ. And would, today would be a very good time just to put our hands together. <laughs> JJ, have a good life, have a happy life, and do something beautiful for God. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. 
it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And Lord, wash away all my iniquities and cleanse me from all of my sins. I pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. To the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us a merciful Lord that this our offering of bread and of wine may find acceptance with you and be transformed into the sacrament of the body and blood of your Son, so that through it the wellspring of every blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in the same way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. The ones who were giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim together the mystery of our faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with you, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I will stand and pray with confidence to the Father, using the words which Jesus, who is our Saviour, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to the temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I wish God's peace and blessing to those people watching prayerfully today in their homes. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation, but health in mind and in body. This is the Lamb of God who takes away all the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And a Eucharistic minister will take Holy Communion to the parishioners in the church upstairs.
the communion antiphon. Though many, we are one bread and one body, for we all partake of the one bread, and we all partake of the one chalice. The Blessed Sacrament is now exposed and the monstrance and people may watch at any time during the day or during the night. In a moment of precious silence, we now thank God for his many gifts. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> may this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in our minds and our bodies, so that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. We meet again tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning for Mass here. In the meantime, God bless. Enjoy the day as best we can.